Hi, welcome to my Senior Honors Academy presentation. My name is Cameron Cage, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the book I wrote, Triangles Make the World Go Round. So, if I can get this running. Okay, Triangles Make the World Go Round. Uh, it is a book that I wrote and published on Amazon. I wrote the book by myself, and uh, yeah, let's take a look. So, a little bit of background. Uh, as far as my math career, why I have, um, you know, why I wrote this book, I've always really liked math. Um, from when I was really young, about third grade, I just, I've loved it. And a little fun fact, I used to spend a couple hours a day uh, in sixth grade doing math problems on Khan Academy just because I, I liked it. Uh, <laughs> I started taking math classes at Concordia when I was in eighth grade. So I went over there in the morning. Uh, spent the mornings over there taking honors geometry with Mr. Kaczynski. And then once I finally got to Concordia, um, I started taking, you know, advanced classes. The one that comes after honors geometry is uh, honors algebra two. And then my junior year at Concordia, I started taking classes over at PFW. So uh, in middle school, eighth grade, I'm going over to Concordia. Uh, high school, I'm going over to college at PFW. Uh, a little bit about the class load I've taken. So like I said, Honors Algebra 2, that was my freshman year. Then I've taken AP Calc, Calc 2, Calc 3, Linear Algebra, AP Stats, and then I just finished Differential Equations this past week. The ones highlighted in black, I know usually you don't highlight in black, but uh, I did yellow. It didn't really look that good. So the ones highlighted in black are the ones that I have taken at PFW. Uh, and then I believe there's seven total about half of those classes were taken online. Um, most of the PFW ones, except for this past one, was taken online. So I've had to teach myself a lot of math, um, had to be resourceful, you know, Khan Academy, again, uh, and then other just online, both um, videos and other resources. So going on. Uh, why I wrote a book. I am not a big reader. In fact, I've only read about, I've never read a book uh, outside of class. I didn't have to read. So why I wrote a book. Let me put that right there. Uh, so at first for my project, I was going to do something that I actually, that I'm very passionate about. I love cars. I'm restoring a 1964 Impala right now. Um, so that's why I do in my free time if I get any. So what I want to do was build an engine from scratch for my project. So I wanted to melt down the aluminum. I wanted to cast it. I wanted to machine the block. You know, before prior to all that, I would have, um, you know, done a 3D model of the block and figured out exactly how to do all that. Um, and then I realized that would have been a lot of work, even though it probably would have been very fun, uh, enjoyable. Uh, it just wasn't really feasible given my schedule. And so I, I had in my notes on my phone, I have a bunch of ideas that I like. And one of them was to write a book about math and trigonometry. Uh, yeah, I, I had it in my phone already. It, it wasn't a, a school assignment or anything else. It was just for my own uh, personal use. I was like, oh, you could, you know, use trigonometry for this, use sign for this. Um, and some of the other topics I get into in the book. Uh, and so, yeah, it's pretty nerdy. And a lot of people, if I tell them that, they, I think it's very weird, but I'll let you in on the secret if you're watching this. Um, I also, I'm sure you know that people in high school are always complaining about, oh, why are we learning this? You know, I'm not gonna have to use this in the real world once I graduate. I'm not gonna need to know the Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to need to know uh, sine, cosine, tangent when I get to the real world. And I thought to myself, well, I have this list that I'm making that kind of contradicts what these people are saying. So maybe I should explicitly write down and show them that, yeah, you do use these things. And so that leads me to my new idea. I'm going to write a book about math and its real world applications, both because I had it written down and to solve people's question of when are we going to have to use this and yeah so triangles make the world go round the book um that's the name of it and 
triangles is because that's what the book starts with. Make the world go round, round, um, short for a round. You know, people make the world go a round. It's kind of a play on words and also the unit circle has a triangle in it. Unit circles round. Uh, and then you, you kind of start to see how triangles and circles are very interrelated um, as you go on in your math career. So kind of a, a whole bunch of underlying themes for that. So this worked better for the people who were in person. Um, you can go to Amazon and you can search it up. It's on there. You can buy it. Uh, it probably wouldn't be too easy for you to scan a QR code right now, but maybe you can. Uh, number one new release in trigonometry. So I'm sure there's a lot of other new releases in trigonometry. Uh, it's a pretty big subsection, but yeah, one five-star review, $20 paperback. Um, I'll make sure to explain this now. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but this T, it's not just a T, it's an upside down intersecting uh, or perpendicular line symbol. This R is the real number symbol. The I is a line, extends in both directions. The A is a compass. The N and the G are just N, regular N and the G. The L is a set of perp, uh, right a ang <laughs> right angle of two lines, as denoted by the little box in the corner. The E is sigma, which is the summation symbol. S is a sinusoidal wave uh, going down to the round part, R. Again, it's just an R. Uh, the O is a diameter and a radius of a circle. U could be a U. It could be the union symbol. It could be either. Um, I didn't really make up my mind as to what I think that is. But then the N, uh, inter or alternate interior angles are um, congruent. So that's showing that. And then the D is a protractor, which is a way to measure angles. So yeah, take uh, check it out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the description in case you uh, didn't get the QR code for it. So, or maybe not. I'm going to tell you about the book. So nine chapters and a little over 200 pages. Uh, it starts with a basic introduction to trials, as I mentioned earlier, and then it builds up through about 10 years of math education. It gets to differential equations and complex solutions to those. So that'd be like a third year college level class. Um, and then the first chapter is like, what is a triangle? Oh, you know, look at a Dorito and it looks like a triangle. So very easy stuff. And it incrementally and uh, progressively builds you up. The beginning of each chapter is going to give you the math part of it. It's going to tell you why um, it works mathematically and kind of what's happening behind the scenes to make this thing true. And then the end of the chapter, there's going to be an application section that's going to give you a few um, real world applications, you know, again, to answer that question, when are we ever going to have to use this or where do we use this as um, you'll see 217 pages if you wanted to know exactly. Again, available on Amazon.com. Uh, the cover art was by me and all the other pictures um, and it's in color. So let me go back i'll highlight this cover uh people in my family when i showed them this are like oh wow that's really cool like who did the cover art and this is after i told them i wrote the book and i was like oh I, like you know i wrote the cover art or i drew the made the cover art so that was kind of annoying that they didn't think i did that myself but uh whatever uh and then the other pictures i did draw a lot of them hand drawn a lot of them digitally um drawn i'll get more into that later and then now I'm getting to the book description, which again, uh, my grandma was like, oh, it's really cool. Who wrote the book description? Well, I wrote the book description. I wrote the whole thing myself. So uh, it's either that would usually be like a compliment, like, oh, it's so professionally done. But after I just told them I wrote it and they are doubting me, I don't know, take it or leave it. But uh, you could go ahead and read this yourself. I'll give you a I'm not going to read every word of it. But uh, it's a casual math book. It's not rigorous like a textbook. It doesn't have um, practice problems in it like maybe a textbook would. It's really hit home and make you memorize all this stuff. It's supposed to kind of teach you as if you were talking with a teacher, talking with somebody who was knowledgeable in the subject and just having a conversation. Um, not like in your face about learning the concepts, 
but kind of, you know, weaving them into the conversation. And so it doesn't feel like learning, even though you are learning. Uh, again, 10 years of mathematical education and just over 200 pages answering the question, when are we ever going to have to use this? And yeah, it's not to make you say, oh, I love math now. I really understand uh, everything about it. And I want to go get a undergrad and master's and doctorate in pure math. No, that's not what this book is about. It's about to give you a greater appreciation for the world around you and the math involved in it and kind of make you just take away this veil, uh, this false veil that math doesn't rule everything around you. Um, and that the world that we live in is governed by mathematics. And just to give you a little insight as to the how, when, where, why of uh, those mathematical topics. Um, yeah, so not really to be in your face about learning it, but you know, I, I, I'll compare it to this. If you, if you play a video game and there's history in that video game, it doesn't feel like you're learning history, but you'll learn that game. And when you think back to that game, you know, it's, it's disguising like a, a Trojan horse of teaching, I guess you could call it. Um, but anyway. And so preview, uh, I actually have the book right here. I didn't have the book when I did the presentation and that's backwards. So you're not going to be able to read it anyways, but this is the math part of the book. Um, so a little explanation about degrees and a different way to think about them. And then, so that's the beginning of the book, like first 10 pages or something. Um, and then on the right side, you're getting into complex solutions, differential equations, and you can see they don't look related at all, but there's a whole bunch of content in between that's going to bridge you from the left side of your screen to the right side of your screen. Um, I really like the formula on the right side. Uh, it's very cool to me, but maybe this will work if the lighting will work. And also my, you're not going to get this watermark on yours. Jeez. Uh, mine, because I have an author copy has this. But here's some more pictures. Wow, this is really not working out for me. Uh, like this. Again, it's not really working. Uh. If you really want to see, you can go ahead and buy the book and you'll get a really good view of what's going on. But including some color, not trying to make it super bland. Um, there's some trigonometric parameterization. So you'll get into that. If you have no idea what that is, again, you can buy the book. You got the good old unit circle on there. Um, some applications, finding distances of stars and map making from the olden days. Uh, what else is cool in here? The whole thing is cool, but I'm trying to pick out the coolest parts. Uh, pizza and then vision. Um, but yeah, I'll just say it again. If you want to get a really good view of it, you can you can go ahead and buy the book. Uh, and a better view of that, or you could look at this, a better view of the applications. So Pythagorean theorem and football tackling uh, in relation to the pursuit angle, um, crime scenes, there's a whole bunch of stuff with that. So using tangent to figure out, um, the blood splatter patterns and the angle that they're hit. And then based on the height of the, um, the perpetrator you could do, and then clothoid, which is Euler, not, uh, Euler, it's Euler's spiral. Um, and that's used for easement curves which basically just give you a gradual acceleration, you could say. So um, the two pictures there, railroads and then interstate um, interchanges. So when you drive on an interstate and you're getting off at an exit, you don't whip the wheel because it's not a super sharp turn. It's slow and gradual, but then it builds up. And then that buildup is characterized by 
Euler spiral. Um, so yeah, you'll see some applications that, I mean, people know football, people know crime scenes, people drive on interstates, people know roller coasters. So it's, you know, in a textbook, you might get, um, oh, how tall is this flagpole? If this tree's shadow um, casts a 10 foot shadow at 3 p.m., you know, that's not it. While it's helpful to figure out, you know, sine, cosine, you know, how often are you going to be thinking about and calculating um, a, a building height or a tree or flagpole's height? You're not. So I'm trying to really hit home the, the applications that you're going to see in your life that are going to impact you. Um, and yeah. So the writing process, because uh, you know, I, I had to write it. So I, I used Zoho Writer to uh, write it instead of Google Docs or Microsoft Word. Primary reason I didn't use Word or Docs uh, was because I used those for school. And I was thinking, oh, you know, it's going to feel like a school project, you know, even though it was. Um, if I use Google Docs or Word, I kind of wanted to give it a different feeling, take a little bit of a different approach, um, if that makes sense. And Zoho Writer... I only really chose it because uh, I looked up what were good writing softwares and that popped up. Looking back, I probably would have used Microsoft Word. Um, Zoho Writer was not the easiest um, software to use and it's not as popular. So there's not as many like help pages or not as easy to get information. Um, Word is just very universal and it's used for a lot of things. And some of the formatting. Um, yeah, if I had to go back, if I write another book, I'll do it. Uh, Microsoft Word, probably. And then copyright, I had to be mindful of that. Uh, I used a, a good amount of resources when I wrote this book, especially for the applications. Um, a lot of those, you know, I didn't know off the top of my head. And so I had to make a work cited page in the back. And also usually in the back of a book, it says like, you know, work cited or uh, something plain and boring like that. I wrote, and it's backwards again, so it doesn't really matter if I show you the book. It says credit where credit is due. So again, trying to give it a little bit of flavor. Uh, uh, the pictures I said I did by myself, I either wrote them, drew them by hand um, with these two Sharpies that I have right here in the seat that I'm sitting in right now. Uh, drew them by hand, scanned them in, for a lot of the, you know, beginning uh, parts of the book. And then by the end, when I'm doing diagrams and stuff, the, you know, the um, pictures I showed for the applications a little bit ago, I did those online in Adobe Express, which is the cheap version, not cheap, the free, <laughs> the free version of Adobe Photoshop. And that comes with stock photos uh, that are free. They're commercial free, royalty free to use um, up to 500,000 books. So once I sell over 500,000 books, then I uh, I guess I have to pay them, but I don't think, I'm not gonna worry about that. I don't think I'm gonna sell that many. But, uh, and then Desmos is what I use to actually make the graphs, um, which I had a little bit of a scare as I was doing this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I, had done, I had done all the graphs and then you know, as I'm finishing up the book, as I'm about to publish it, I realize, and Desmos is a free um, graphing calculator online. I realize, like in the little tiny fine print, it says non-commercial use only. You know, if you want to use commercial, you know, contact us, uh, and you have to buy like a license. I was like, oh man. Well, hopefully, like I'm gonna email them. I'm just gonna be like, oh, it's for my senior project for my high school. You know, it's not, it's barely commercial, you know, like just kind of go that angle at it. And they told me, you know, yeah, you can use the graphs. You don't have to pay anything. Uh, just make sure you put us in your work cited the credit where credit is due page. So I did that, that all worked out well. So yeah, that definitely, uh, definitely scared me. And then, cause I didn't think I was going to get this done on time. But yep, just had to write that I used it for permission, with permission. And then backtracking a little bit, 
uh, I already had the idea and layout in my head. You know, a lot of people write an outline for a book, but I had it in my head. Um, so then I just ended up writing that down. So that wasn't super hard. I, I always had a vision, even going way back to when I was just typing in my notes. And when I was thinking about writing the book, I knew I wanted it to have a math part and application part and, you know, give a little, a few proofs in there and the overall flow, the tone. And so really what I had to do was write it and uh, allocate time for it because I'm a pretty busy person. But it took about 180 hours <clears throat> hours uh, to write the book. Uh, let me fix this light. So the initial plan was for the book to be 100 pages long uh, with 10 chapters, 10 pages each. It was going to be a you know, short and sweet little coffee table book. Um, just like a little help book or, you know, I don't know, whatever people who read books, uh, whatever they read for fun. I certainly don't know what it's called because I don't read books. Uh, but when I finished my first draft, it was over 150 pages and that had no pictures in it, uh, which was alarming because I, I, I tend to overwrite things even for school. Um, and that also had no applications in the chapters. I was the, the pure math part was 150 pages long. Uh, and then I, you know, I added the applications, I added pictures and it got up to about 240 pages after formatting, text wrapping, cropping all the pictures, um, doing some editing. I got it down to the 217 figure that I mentioned earlier. And I wanted it to be very detailed at first, which I don't know how I thought that was going to happen in a hundred pages. Um, but yeah, that, that changed pretty quickly. I'll give a little example. So you saw that some of the applications are like, oh, this is how you can use the Pythagorean theorem um, or how you could see it in football. Well, one of the things that uh, sinusoidal waves are used for is AC current, which is the wall outlet voltage uh, that you have in your household. And alternating current is what AC stands for. Uh, and so it was going to be like your house is has like 1,500 square feet of carpet and... You know, you're using a 60 hertz, 120 volt, 15 amp uh, vacuum and your vacuum in the vacuum is like a 15 inches. The brush is 15 inches wide. You vacuum it and you want to know how much time and how much money based on how much the like the watt hour. It was, it was going to be super uh, involved and it was going to be a very specific example and then I realized there was just no way that that was going to happen because it was just way too involved. Um, I, it would be nice to do it, but I don't see it in the foreseeable future of making a second edition with that much. I think it would lose a lot of people uh, and just be a lot of work for me. Not that I don't like it, but I think the amount of time I would put into it versus how much enjoyment people would get from it would not, uh, would not be worth my time to write it. Uh, and then one of the biggest challenges towards the end of finishing the book, once I had all the actual text and all the pictures was formatting it, like I said, um, text wrapping everything, making it all kind of look pretty. So it's not just every, like a, a picture, a block of words, a picture, you know, wanted to make it actually look like a book um and then exporting to a pdf was also extremely hard uh for no good reason it was losing all the cropping on my pictures the formatting of the words um the even just taking out pictures and deleting them at some points when i would go back and look at the pdf i still had no idea why i was doing that uh and then the way i fixed that was I had to trick the document. I had to hit print and then it would, you know, reformat the document exactly the way I wanted it. And then I could save that as a PDF instead of printing it. I don't know. It ended up working uh, somehow, uh, which saved me a lot of time, thankfully. That was the hardest part, I think, of the whole process and just worrisome because it was getting close to the deadline. So, yeah, you can see the pictures that I made now a little clearer. Uh, unit circle, I did make that picture. One of the things about copyright, oh, I didn't know, is it's someone's intellectual property to take their unit circle. Well, you know, I'm not a copyright lawyer, so I figured I, I can do it myself. That picture took a few hours to make because I had to 
hold up a uh i don't know if i have it down here a protractor maybe i moved it but i'd uh, hold up a protractor to my screen and measure out each angle and then type the numbers and then rotate them exactly and uh, that was it was very involved to make that um so I, I have a greater appreciation for people who make those. Top is that uh, trigonometric parallax, which is measuring distances of um, stars and planets using tangent. So I made that myself. The little, like the earth, you know, is from a stock image from Adobe Express. Then I draw all the lines and I do all that. <clears throat> uh, cross product is, uh, you can find that using sign so that's a more simple picture and then a hand-drawn image um the bottom right i drew that by hand freehand uh talking about uh spherical coordinate systems and how you can switch from those to rectangular using some trigonometry uh so the publishing process <clears throat> so how i published this book so there's a couple of different ways that you can go about publishing a book. Um, you know, a lot of people, big books, they'll go to a publisher. I, again, I don't know any publishers because I don't read books, but they'll go to a publisher and submit like a manuscript and the publisher will, you know, accept it or deny it. Uh, but I decided not to do that. I decided to self-publish it um, just because I, I knew I was on a time crunch and I didn't want... I just wanted to get it published. I didn't really care if it was with a big company or not. So I saw Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing, uh, better known as Amazon KDP. And I went that route because uh, it was free. It would put your book on Amazon, which is a very large marketplace uh, and easy to find. And people trust it uh, to buy uh, and purchase off of. And they did it quickly. They published the book in about three three days is what they tell you. Um so difficulty publishing, one of the main ones was this cover. Uh, I had to make a PDF of this whole back cover, binding front cover. Uh, and it had to have the right bleed lines because when you cut it, um, you know, it doesn't always cut it on the same exact part. So I need to get that right. And there was no like guide for that. Um, so may, I had to make a lot of PDFs and I had to, it, it was a lot of work and a lot of tediousness. And then every time you upload it, it takes like an hour and then you see, oh, you know, I had to move it up like three thirty seconds of an inch and then, you know, move it down a 16th. So it, it was, I'm glad I got it done. It was just a lot of work. Um, and the book kept getting denied and I could not figure out why. And they just told me that the cover was illegible. So at first I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's all these symbols that I kind of like them. They're cool. Um, and I just did not want to change that. And so I, I did a little trick and I tried to make it work, you know, and they get back to me a day later and they say, Oh, you know, it's not being published. It's, another error with the cover. And now I, I needed to have this done on Sunday. Um, and this was about Tuesday that this was happening and it wasn't being published yet. And it was really frustrating. Um, so I ended up emailing them. It took them two days to get back to me. So it's Thursday. I'm thinking, okay, this project needs to be done Sunday. It's not published yet. And they tell me that my barcode was covering up one digit of pi, which was uh, there's a hundred digits of pi on this back cover and the barcode is covering up one that was about right here. And that's why it wasn't getting published. And all it did was delete that and uploaded it and it was published like two hours later. So I would have had it published a long time before. Um, but there was no way for me to know because when I was viewing it, that barcode was covering it up. But it all got published. It all worked out. Um, I got it done on time. And then pricing and royalties... <clears throat> Uh, you get paid on Amazon KDP based on royalties. So it's 60% uh, of what you list the book at. And then I have to pay for printing. Well, I mentioned earlier that color was a big part. So colored printing, 
uh, cost a lot more than black and white. And so the price of printing each book is $8.66. And so I have to pay that for every book sold um, off of what I make on the royalty. And so, and if it was black and white, it'd be about $3. So it's, you know, whatever, 250% uh, more expensive to do colored than black and white. Uh, so just to break even, the the 60% royalty on $15 would be about $8.66. I'd have to pay that. So I'd be making $0 if I priced it at 15. So I had to price it about $20 and I only make $3 a book. Um, so I'm definitely not going to get rich off this book. Uh, but it ended up working out. Honestly, I didn't do it for the money. I did it for the project. But still, you know, I didn't want to spend all this time and make zero. Um, but yeah, it's, it's whatever. Uh, so the future of the book, Kindle version. Uh, one thing that I'm going to have to do is Kindle doesn't like PDFs. It likes Microsoft Word documents. So I'll have to take from Zoho Writer, which is the program that I use, export it into Word. Well, I did that, and it changes every it changes all the formatting. So I'll have to go back through when I have some more time, reformat everything in Microsoft Word, upload it to Kindle, uh, and get that going. Um, black and white version. So like I said, um, I, I'll be able to price the book a little bit lower, and I'll be able to increase my margins on it. Uh, it won't look as pretty, but... It'll just be another version out there for people to buy. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly won't look as fun. And then a book signing, uh, my mentor, Mr. Lazel, uh, a science teacher at Concordia, he talked to me. He thinks we should do a, some sort of book signing. Uh, I don't know a date for that yet. Um, certainly before school ends. Uh, so sometime in the next couple of weeks, uh, I think we'll get a book signing going. Uh, cause you know, a lot of people are actually, there's a lot more people interested in this book than I thought there'd be. So maybe I'm sparking a mathematical, uh, renaissance within, uh, Concordia. So, uh, I'd ask you guys for any questions, but I definitely can't answer any of them. So you're just going to have to call Concordia's main office and leave them a note and hopefully it'll get to me, but I, I want to thank you all for watching this if you made it this far then you're certainly interested uh, i'd ask that you check out my book triangles make the world go round on amazon.com and uh yeah thank you for making it this far and not getting bored and uh enjoy whatever it is you are going to do after you click out of this video so thank you